Hey everybody, Wicked Gaming here, and today we're going to do a tutorial on how to set up a communications satellite network that can allow remote control of unmanned ships. Now, some of you have, may have experienced in the past, if you have an unmanned ship that loses line of sight with Kerbin, you won't be able to control the ship. For example, if you send an unmanned vessel to the moon, the MUN, and the ship orbits around to the side facing away from Kerbin, you won't be able to control the vessel until it or its orbit brings it back uh, in sight with or back into line of sight with Kerbin again. So the solution to this is to set up a network of satellites around the planet or moon that you want to send undemanded vessels to. Also, I like to place my satellites in circular orbits where the satellites are equidistant from each other, and that is actually rather tricky to do. Now, I have seen some tutorials on the web on how to do this, but most do not explain the physics behind the method. So that is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to actually derive the math behind the method so you know exactly what you're doing and why. So let's jump right in. Now the first thing you have to calculate is the minimum orbital radius for the satellites. Now notice here in this example we have three satellites all equal distance from each other. However, their orbit is not high enough as the satellites that have a a line of sight with each other, the planets basically in the way. So given a certain planet or moon with a known radius, what is the minimum orbital radius that we have to place the satellites at so that they will all have line of sight with each other and thus can communicate with each other? So there is a rather easy geometrical derivation for this. This is the same problem as a circle inscribed with the within a polygon and here in this picture you see the polygon is just the shape formed by the satellites and this inscribed circle is the planet or moon that they orbit now notice that the number of satellites equals the number of sides or the number of points on the polygon in this case it's just a pentagon but we're going to solve this generally for any number of satellites so here's an example of a pentagon with an inscribed circle which is going to be the, the planet we're going to use big R to designate the orbital radius of the satellites and little r for the radius of the planet. Now big R is just the distance from the center of the planet to one of the points on the polygon. And little r is just the distance from the center of the circle or the planet to the center of one side of the polygon. So notice that this just forms a triangle, a right triangle with, a, with an unknown angle theta. So clearly little r divided by big R is just sine of theta. And here, once we just solve for R and clean things up a bit, we get this relation here. Big R is equal to the planet's radius times the cosecant of theta. But how do we find theta for any general polygon? Well, for polygons where the sides are all equal lengths, like equilateral triangles, squares, pentagons, hexagons, etc., theta is always going to be half of the polygon's internal angle. Here we're going to call it alpha. Now there's a known formula that for any polygon, the sum of the polygon's internal angles, angles equals the number of sides minus 2 times 180 degrees. And I'm not going to derive this, but Khan Academy, he did an excellent video uh, on how to derive this, and I've linked it in, in the description below if anyone's interested in, in looking at that. But in our case, since we want our satellites all equal distance apart, all the internal angles are going to be the same, alpha in this case. So the sum of all the internal angles is just n, where n's the number of sides or the number of points on the polygon, times alpha. So solving for alpha just gives us the following result. And then cleaning this result up a bit and converting from degrees to radians gives the following. So now going back to our previous equations theta and for theta and alpha, we have these two equations. Now simply plugging in our result for alpha to solve for theta gives the following. Now we can use the above result in our equation for big R. Plugging our results for theta in our equation for big R gives this. Now what does this state? This states that our satellite orbital radius equals the planet's radius times the cosecant of pi over 2 times 1 minus 2 divided by n, where n is just the number of satellites we want to place into this circular orbit. However, the game doesn't use big R. We typically measure our orbits in terms of distances from the surface. 
not to the center of the planet. So we're going to call that distance D and it is actually equal to big R minus little r. And that's what we're gonna use when we set up our sat satellite's orbit. So this method would make the satellite's line of sight exactly tangential to the surface of the planet. So if you are a little bit off when setting this up, and you will be because it is impossible to set an orbit up exactly as you want. Uh, if that happens, you're gonna get a situation where the planet still blocks the satellite's line of sight with each other. So you actually want the satellite orbit to be larger than this number. You want to make sure that the planet is definitely out of the way of the satellite's line of sight with each other. I typic So I typically add 50,000 to 100,000 meters to whatever I calculate for D. And uh, to f actually find out the actual radius of all the planets and moons within the game, you can go to the Kerbal Space Program wiki and get those numbers. Uh, straight off of their website but i went ahead and if you look in the description i actually put in little r the actual radius for all the planets that are in the game just so you don't have to look them up and i also went ahead and calculated big r for each each one of those those are in the description below if you just want those for your own future reference uh that way if you don't really have to calculate it every time in game i just like showing people where you get this from how is this derived how do you find out what's the minimum orbital radius you need for a communication satellite network like this. So how do we deploy the satellites into this orbit so that the satellites are all equal distance from each other? How do we go about solving this problem given the physics involved with the game? Well, what I do is create a ship that can carry all the satellites that I want to put into a circular orbit. I just call it my drop ship. I then send this drop ship to the planet or moon where I'm going to deploy the satellites. And once I arrive at my destination, I get into orbit greater than that minimum distance D that we derived previously. And then I circularize the orbit of my drop ship. So what do I do next? Well, imagine if I wanted to place three satellites into this circular orbit. Well, I drop the first satellite for my drop ship, and then I change the orbit of my drop ship to a special elliptical orbit such that when I make one full orbital rotation with my drop ship, returning back to the point where I dropped the first satellite, well, the first satellite will have gone through one full orbit plus one third of its next orbit. Then I drop the second satellite and circularize its orbit. Next, I wait until my dropship returns again to the same location we dropped the other two satellites. And by that time, the first satellite has gone through two thirds of its orbit. The second satellite has gone through one third of its orbit. So now I drop the third and last satellite and all three of those satellites will be equal distance from each other in their orbit. So the trick to this method is to finding that special orbit so that this is all timed correctly. And so how do we solve for this and find that orbit? Well, we use Kepler's third law. And for this example of three satellites, we want their distance from each other to be one third of their circular orbit from each other. So in other words, I want the satellites to complete one full orbit plus one third of an orbit for every orbit that the drop ship completes. Well, another way of thinking of this is just using orbital periods and an orbital period it's just the time that it takes for something to complete one one orbit so this problem can also be thought of like this i want the time it takes my drop ship to complete an orbit to be or one orbital per period i want that time to be equal to the time that the satellite takes to complete one of its orbital periods plus one third of another of its orbital periods and so we can express this mathematically like so. So in this equation, you can see that T or the orbital period of my ship is going to be equal to the orbital period of the satellite plus one divided by N times the orbital, orbital period of the satellite. And in this case, in this example, N, we're using three satellites. In other words, the satellite is going to go through one orbital period plus one third of another orbital period. And we simplify this equation like so. And we're gonna call this the orbital period relation between our dropship and the satellites.
Now we bring in Kepler's third law, and it relates the period of an orbit to the semi-major axis of that orbit. Here T represents the orbital period, and alpha is going to be the semi, it's what I'm using for the semi-major axis. Now remember from geometry that the semi-major axis of an ellipse is just one half the length of its longest side. So for a circle, this just it reduces to the radius of the circular orbit. So taking the previous period equation and squaring both sides gives this equation on the left. Now we can take Kepler's law on the right and plug it into our orbital period equation, which gives the following. Notice that 4 pi over g, which is the gravitational constant, times the mass of the planet or moon. That's common to both sides of the equation, and it can be divided out. So that simplification gives the following equation. And here we have related the semi-major axes of both the ship's orbit and the satellite or satellite's orbit from Kepler's third law. Now we need to find some relation between the semi-major axis to end game parameters for our orbits. So just focusing on the drop ship's orbit, you can see from the diagram on the right that, this, that twice the semi-major axis of the ship's orbit, that is the same distance as the ship's apoapsis plus its periapsis plus the diameter of the planet that it's orbiting. Now next, focusing on the satellite circular orbit, we see that the satellite semi-major axis is the same distance as the satellite's periapsis plus the radius of the planet. And now also note for circular orbits, periapsis and apsoapsis are one and the same. And I'm just leaving it as periapsis in this equation, and you'll see why here shortly. So expressing these two diagrams mathematically gives the following two equations on the right. Now also notice I dropped the subscripts from the periapsis for the ship and the satellite. And then the reason why is if you go back and look at the diagram, you'll see that they're one and the same. The ship's periapsis and the satellite's periapsis are one and the same. Now plugging those two equations on the right into our equation on the left gives the following result. So next we solve this equation for the apoapsis of our drop ship, which gives this resulting equation. Now there's one final piece of information. The value d that we calculated earlier for our satellite's circular orbital distance from the surface is indeed the same value as the periapsis, or p, in this equation. Thus, I will just make that substitution right now. This is the result we needed. This is the new apoapsis for that special orbit for our drop ship that is needed for this method to work. Basically, it states that the ship's new apoapsis is equal to two times the number of satellites plus one to the two-thirds power divided by the number of satellites to the two-thirds power times the distance of the satellite's orbit above the planet plus the radius of the planet minus the distance that the satellite circular orbit above the surface is plus two times the radius of the planet. So the following is a synopsis of what you will do to implement this method. Number one, you want to determine how many satellites you want to place in a circular equal di equidistance orbit. You're going to construct the vessel needed to do this plus the satellites that you're going to deploy. Again, remember you need at least three satellites for this method to work. Uh, number two, Calculate the minimum orbital distance of the satellite above the planet's surface. That is our value D that we derived earlier. And be sure to add 50,000 to 100,000 extra meters to this value just to give you some extra height above the planet or moon where you wish to place the satellites. Number three, you're going to enter the planet or moon's orbit with the dropship, and you're going to circularize your dropship's orbit to, to that previous D value. Now, also, it isn't really necessary to calculate a dead set exact value of D. It's just easier to make sure you are generous enough distance above that minimum D value. Like I said, you know, just get up somewhere 50 to 50,000 to 100,000 meters above that. Uh, you just, what's really important, you just need to write down what your final D value number is because you're going to use that in the last calculation uh, to calculate your, ap your new apoapsis. And also, the other big thing to remember, you have to make sure the dropship's orbit is circularized before going on. Number four, next you're going to calculate the dropship's new apoapsis given N, D, and R. And remember, N is just the number of satellites that you're going to deploy. 
D is the distance your satellite's orbit is above the surface of the planet or moon that you're setting the circular or orbit up at. And R is just the radius of the planet or moon that you're orbiting. Number five, drop the first satellite and immediately perform an orbital maneuver to bring the ship to that new apoapsis value. Number six, complete one orbit of the dropship and drop the second satellite. Seven, you're going to immediately circularize the orbit of that second satellite as soon as you drop it. Number eight, you just repeat the same steps over and over. After every orbit of your dropship, you're going to drop that next satellite. You're going to circularize that satellite's orbit and rinse and repeat until you've deployed all your satellites. So we're going to go ahead and use this method to set up three communication satellites around Kerbin's first moon called the MUN. So the MUN has a radius of 200,000 meters. So plugging that in for R and also plugging in N equals 3 for R3 satellites, I calculate a minimum value for D of 200,000 meters. So I'm going to add 50,000 meters to that for like a buffer and set my satellite at a circular orbit of 250,000 meters. Now here I've made it to the MUN and I've already set up my dropship's orbit at that 250,000 meters above the surface of the MUN. Now we need to calculate my dropship's new apoapsis. We have three satellites, so again equals three. R is the radius of the MUN, which is 200,000 meters. And we set the satellite's orbit at 250,000 meters above the surface of the MUN, so again D is equal to 250,000. So plugging those values into the apoapsis equation, I get a value of 440,272 meters for the dropship's new apoapsis. So here I am deploying the first satellite. Now I'm going to speed up the time a bit and watch how the first satellite has gone through one and one third of its orbits while the dropship completes just one of its orbit. It took me about 30 minutes to de deploy all three satellites. I did numerous course corrections while circularizing the orbit, orbits of the satellites. I just really wanted to get them uh, precise and perfect. So I'm going to cut out a lot of that video because uh, it just for brevity because it is kind of boring. So anyway, here we're cut, cut through to the final setup of my satellites. I turned on the curb and calm that to vessels link so you can get an idea of how well this method works. And you can see here we have three satellites that are basically making an equilateral triangle in their orbits. They're all evenly spaced with each other. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and check back often for more tutorial videos. See ya!